We are past the halfway point of the legislative session and lawmakers pulled some surprises, passing some major pieces of legislation dealing with public safety this past week. K5's Drew Mickelson was there for all of it. So Drew, what stood out to you? Well, Christine, last time we spoke, I think I mentioned that this is sort of the March Madness time here at the Capitol. And this past week, we truly saw some upsets and some buzzer beaters. The biggest issue that I, I think was dealt with was this issue regarding police and when they have the authority to chase after suspects. That was a bill that appeared dead and that prompted a rally here at the state Capitol steps. I have suffered horrendously and I will suffer until my dying day because the police were not able to pursue a known criminal caught with a stolen vehicle and place him in jail where he wouldn't be a danger to the community. That's Amber Goldaid. Her 12 year old daughter, Immaculate, was run over and killed in Pierce County in January of 2022. She says her daughter's death was caused by a law that restricts when police can chase after someone. In 2021, lawmakers put limits on chases, only allowing them for violent sexual crimes or DUIs. Now, police have blamed an increase in crime on that law, saying criminals are getting bolder, especially thieves, because they know they won't get chased. With just a couple of hours left before a cutoff date on Wednesday, the Senate passed a bill to authorize more police chases. No one wants people to be hurt. We want our law enforcement officers to protect the public. We want them to protect everyone in the public. And unfortunately, that has not been the case. And that's why a lot of these bills were done through the legislation is because the judgment that was being used needed to be adjusted. I think we need to move this needle. I think that's where the public is and that's where I am. I think that the provision that's come out of the Senate is realistic and it's meaningful. And I hope the House will carefully uh, consider it and pass it. <laughs> Now that bill starts all over in the House, it'll be interesting to see how it proceeds. Christine? So Drew, lawmakers made history last week on two gun-related bills also. What's still alive regarding guns? Yeah, gun laws are, are tough ones to pass here in Olympia, even though Democrats hold the majority. But they were able to pass three gun-related laws without any Republican votes. A ban on the sale of weapons defined as assault weapons has repeatedly died here in past sessions. But late Wednesday, the House passed that bill. It's the first time legislators have advanced that bill that far. They worked late into the night on Tuesday on a different bill that would require a gun buyer to pass a safety course. It would also implement background checks and a 10 day waiting period before anyone can buy a gun. Representative Liz Berry, a Democrat from Seattle, sponsored that bill. Back in 2011, she worked for U.S. Representative Gabby Giffords and was at the Arizona event where a man shot and killed six people, including fellow Gifford staffer and friend of Representative Barry, Gabe Zimmerman. My pain inspires my activism. That's why I ran for office. I'm here to make sure that no one else dies by a gun in the state of Washington, and it's step by step to get there. The reality is the, the Democrats have a strong majority if they have a will to pass these types of bills that I think fly in the face of, uh, of our state and our federal constitution and the recent rulings, and then uh, they, they, they have the political power to do that. There were some high profile bills that will not be advancing this year. Anything jump out to you on that list, Drew? Yeah, the cutoff killed a few bills that people were really passionate about, including the one that would have established an amendment in the state's constitution to establish and protect abortion rights. That one just did not have enough support to move on. The move to lower the blood alcohol level for drunk drivers from 0.08 to 0.05 will not be surviving this year, even though it did have a lot of bipartisan support. If you like being able to turn right on red lights, there's some good news for you. The state will not be passing any restrictions on that. One bill that did advance and has a hearing tomorrow is the Sam Martinez Hazing Act. It would strengthen the laws regarding hazing. Martinez was the 19 year old from Bellevue killed in a hazing incident at a Washington State University fraternity. I really hope that you can pass this bill. And remember Hugo, the youngest and potentially most influential lobbyist we've ever seen here in Olympia? Well, the parents of the eight year old reached out to legislators to try and force insurance companies to pay for hearing aids. He testified before the House earlier this year. That bill is still alive. Hugo and some of his friends will be back here at the Capitol on Tuesday to testify before the Senate. Christine. True, it's been fascinating to see how things are playing out. We know we have a ways to go. Thank you so much for all of your coverage.
And if you want to see all of Drew's coverage from the Capitol, you can text the word session to 206-448-4545 and we'll send you a link.